Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Demon Tech Digital. I am Neo. In this video, I want to discuss the Red Dragon M908 Impact MMO mouse by Red Dragon. Now, I'm not going to be talking specifically about the mouse itself because I think if you're a, an Impact owner, you'll already know how good the mouse is it's a great mouse it just its functionality is is really good especially for the price point but i want to talk about the software itself because we got a new update so i'm going to go ahead and pop it up so you can see it here's what the the new interface looks like now there's a lot to talk about here and i'll i'll try to keep it short and simple but first of all we've got a whole new layout everything looks completely different and it, it's really aesthetically pleasing i think it looks cool now we've got some buttons up here that are all designated to the profiles so we've got add delete load save I believe that's save yeah save copy and reset this will reset the current profile, not all of them. So, in addition to that, we've got a mode button that seems to be tied into the profile. See, if I click that, it jumps down to profile 2, and of course my mouse is ridiculously slow now. But, that's what we got. Now, I'm not entirely sure what this does so i can't speak too much about it but we have it and then if well if anybody knows what this is for let me know uh you got your lighting okay and it's the same effects that we've always have that we've have always had Breathing rainbow, full lighted wave, go without trace, reactive flash, off, right? But one of the things that you'll notice right away is that we now have an actual legitimate color slider here. So we can change our colors to how we want versus having the standard swatches here and then only adjusting the light and dark versions of those colors. We can now manipulate them to get the the exact color we want, which in my case is that Maliwan Royal Blue, because I'm just a total fangirl of <laughs> blue and orange. My entire setup is blue and orange. So I guess if you wanted to say portal, you could also use portal as a good color scheme. But that's what I got. So this addition right here is the whole inspiration of me doing this video because it's such a big thing for us red dragon users that it needed to be mentioned now one of the things that i will mention in addition to that is if i go down here to the actual program itself let's put this in the window you're going to notice right off the bat, if you go into the program files folder, if you look at it, they have combined all of the mice in this software. So you won't have to download anything separately. Here's my impact. Here's an invader, legend, M808, M998, so on and so forth. Here's your macro database right here. If you want to put macros in there. And I think this is really cool. Where as before you had to actually just download the impact drivers and software. Now it's all inclusive. So it makes it very easy to you just download the one program and it'll just work. Going into customization, same as before, just a different layout. So if, if you know what it is that you're 
working with, you'll know instantly. Just click on a button and bam, there you go. Sorry about that plane overhead. My wife had to edit out like 15 or 16 planes out of her video that she shot yesterday. It was ridiculous. We're supposed to be in a pandemic, man. Them things shouldn't even be in the air. <laughs> but apparently people need to be places. I don't know. I don't care. It's just annoying and frustrating. But that's what the delay is for. So I cut that out of there if I have to. And if I did, you probably won't even know what I'm talking about. But at any rate, so you've got all your side buttons here. And then you've got your front. You'll be greeted with the front panel options at first and you've got one through six and four is the fire button and you've got your dpi switches which you can change uh, i don't really necessarily recommend it because yeah that's uh, if you need to adjust your dpi on the fly you're kind of boned if you don't have these set to that so now that we'll now that we've talked about DPI, let's go into the DPI settings themselves. You've got your standard 125 hertz to 1,000 hertz polling rate. You've got from 200 to 12,400. That's more than anybody will ever need on a mouse. And I would like to meet the guy who can run their mouse at this speed. That would be insane. As it is. I have mine set in increments of 600. It starts at 1200 and jumps to 3600. And got all those in between. Um, got pointer speed, which you can then adjust with your DPI to really dial it in. And you have your scroll line speed, which you can change from one to whatever. Um, I've done this in the past, and yeah, it kind of gets herky-jerky, and it's really fast. But it's it's great for navigating really big sites with a lot of stuff on them. You can get down to the bottom quickly if you need to. <clears throat> but keep in mind, you'll be missing out on stuff. So that's all we really got to say about that. Here's the new macro layout. I've got two. I've got the Snip Tool and OBS Mute. This way here, I can mute uh, with the mouse button on the fly if I need to uh, in the event of planes. But very easy to do. You just you add one. It'll come in as name underscore one or what have you. You highlight and then you change it and then you click change name and it'll automatically change the name you've got some mouse options here so you can combine them with your macro you've got your start that will actually start the macro and then this turns into a stop button once you're done you can record delays in between actions or you can insert your own delay in between each action this is really good if you want to bind, say, your arrow keys. My keyboard doesn't have dedicated arrows because it's a 60% keyboard. So I have to use the FN key in combination with an I, J, K, or L key in order to use the arrow keys. This will allow you to do that through a macro I can set up a macro with say mouse button number one which would also be keyboard number one um, and you can make your own custom macro out of that to be used with it so um, you can't use FN I don't think unfortunately I, I tried and it won't allow you to use FN I think because it's a dedicated button within the actual firmware of the the keyboard but you can use other methods if you want to you could do like alt one or something like that to get that to work um but yeah it's it's really neat how you can add that delay 
Uh, and it's, it's really useful because, like I said in an earlier video that I deleted, but bring it up now, if you do bind an arrow key or arrow keys to your mouse, you're going to want that delay because that delay is going to be most effective when you hold the button down so that it, it moves incrementally rather than just snaps to the end on either direction or snaps up, snaps down, things like that. Um, that delay will give you that more incremental ability. So that's basically all I've got for the actual program. So let's talk about the pros and the cons. Now, we'll talk about the pros first, because why not? Uh, first thing is the new layout. It looks really clean. Interface looks really nice. I like it. I like it a lot, especially the addition of this slider. This makes this whole program so much better. The color controls are something that we've, at least I've been wanting for a very long time since I bought this mouse. Uh, probably, well, was, I've had this mouse for probably about six months now and, and the functionality's always been there, but I the the lighting was always a sticking point with me, and I just kind of, you know, resigned myself to, okay, I guess I'm just going to have only orange, but, you know, now I can manipulate the colors to exactly what I want, and that's really awesome. That's a big thing. And that's all I got really for the pros. Um, there are a few cons, and that those cons are there's no program settings built in the closest that we have to program settings is a right click and you get load config and that's about it or you can quit the program i've been dinking around with seeing if i can get this thing to open minimize to tray because that is another issue that I have is when you start Windows, this is the screen you're greeted with on your desktop. It'll pop this right up and you have to close it every time, uh, which is not necessarily a deal breaker, but it, it's kind of annoying. I mean, let's, let's face it. It's, eh, it is what it is. And then lastly is the fact that there's no per application settings yet now we have profiles but we only have five of them which is not a bad thing per se but most gamers can absorb those up just in five games but if you're like i am and you work in photoshop a lot and you work in cinema 4d a lot you'd really i would like to really see the ability to apply profiles at least macros to applications themselves and as far as i can see there's no per application setting that correlates to just those things so um that's something that some of the other big box uh designers i guess for lack of a better term like synapse 3 has it uh it's it's very much a software driven action to be able to do that uh or ability i should say and it would not be it would be obviously difficult to program this into it but you know as a native functionality but it's all software driven. There's no need to do a firmware update. There would be no need to do any, you know, to maybe buy a new mouse or any of that stuff unless you wanted to. So that's really kind of the only main gripe that I have about that is, is a lack of per application settings. A lot of the other mouse, mice, mouses, meesen, a lot of the other mice have that. Uh, a lot of the other peripherals makers have that, like like I said, Razer, Logitech, Corsair, people, uh, companies like that. They will put that in there. Uh, but that's all I've really got. 
I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Do you have this mouse? Is it something that you might be interested in? Because the reality of it is it, it, it is a pretty direct competitor with some of the top of the line mice. Like the uh, this particular one is the MMO version. And it, it holds well. I, I imagine that it would... I'll have to see once I get my Naga Trinity uh, if it can honestly hold its weight against the Naga Trinity. But I think it will. As far as the MMO plate is concerned, and what I mean by that is the Naga Trinity is three mice in one, essentially. It's got three separate interchangeable plates that have two buttons, seven buttons, and 12 buttons. And you can just, they're held on by magnets and you just pop them off. They have contact plates on them and you just put them back in and they just work. And so aside from that, functionality is really good. I've had no issues with left click failing or right click failing. I've had no issues with the the scroll wheel jumping around like sometimes that'll be a thing too sometimes you get ghost clicks is what they call them uh so yeah and that's the reason why i bought this was because my logitech g502 hero so uh silver edition started ghost clicking and it wouldn't respond at all so i don't know if that was a software or a hardware issue but I just know that it started happening and I wanted to try this out because I wanted a an MMO style mouse specifically for productivity like in Cinema 4D but I didn't want to spend $80 just to find out that no you really can't use that for that because it's awkward and, and janky so but there you go that's it Hope you guys enjoyed the video once again. Y'all take care, stay safe, and I'll see you on the flip side. Peace.